Greetings, greetings, greetings. We're so happy to have you with us today. Uh, my name is Elton Brewington. You've joined Claire Brewington with uh, Brightside Global Trade Podcast. And uh, we're delighted to have Robert Baker with us today. Uh, Robert is the author of the book, the, A Foray into Hollywood. Uh, thanks for joining us, Robert. We appreciate your presence and we want to hear all about your book and uh, and uh, your turn and spin on Hollywood. Tell us, tell us. Well, thank you so much, first of all, for having me on. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about the book. Um, yeah, the book is just basically my memoir, a small town in South Carolina. Uh, had dreams and aspirations to come in the, about coming to Hollywood. So the book kind of just chronicles my journey from the small town of South Carolina it's from to New York and then to Los Angeles. So, um, you know, it's uh, kind of a fun story, uh, it's an inspirational story for anybody that wants to just kind of learn about the ins and outs of Hollywood. Um, and also a cautionary tale about the, some of the do's and don'ts of, of the business. So I hope uh, anyone that you know has an interest or just want to be inspired by a book that uh, gives hope, tenacity, and uh, some fun stories along the way about some of your favorite Hollywood uh, celebrities. Uh, it's a it's a great little read and. and uh, I think it's so what inspired I know you gave us a little bit about that, but tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and uh, what inspired you to um, to uh, write. What can what can the readers expect? Uh, because we want them to buy it. It's a great okay. read for summer. And uh, as we've got a lot of tea people on, so tea and books go together. Uh, okay. so, so, yeah. OK, well, basically, um, you know, the, I'll give you a little summation of it. Uh, my story, like I said, I started out in small town, South Carolina. I was a professional magician. I uh, started doing magic at a young age and then wound up uh, uh, teaching magic for a little bit. And then uh, during that same period of time, uh, on junior high, high school, I started working at my local theater as a projectionist and uh, building movies, putting movies together. And so that kind of inspired me to kind of fall in love with the movie business. And then I got inspired to kind of go to Hollywood to, to pursue that career. Uh, so I had an aunt and uncle that lived in New York City uh, at the time. And I figured, well, at least, you know, I have to get out of South Carolina to be able to pursue my career. So I had called them and asked if I could come stay to kind of, you know, uh, get closer to the action, so to speak, and start studying and all that stuff. And uh, so they agreed. I wound up moving to New York and lived with them in pursuit of in a career, started auditioning and all that stuff. And uh, while I was there, I was able to book a couple of movies as an actor uh, in, a, in a couple of like uh, low budget films. And uh, me and one of the films I did, uh, myself and the director became good friends and we started writing together. And we wrote a couple of movies together. I started sending those out to Hollywood. And uh, as luck would have it, and God's grace and mercy, um, uh, one of the uh, uh, production companies at Warner Brothers liked one of the scripts that I'd written and asked me to, if I was in the, if I came out, they'd love to meet with me. So uh, I wound up taking a trip to, uh, from New York to LA to go visit. Uh, at the time, I had to, my, my now ex-wife, uh, we her sister-in-law, her sister lived in California, so we decided to take a vacation and also uh, go, you know, visit. I could do my interview as well, and uh, mm -hmm. that turned out to be a great trip. And I met with them, and they offered me a job doing coverages uh, for scripts uh, for for their for their projects. And only problem was I had to move from uh, New York to LA to 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 take that opportunity. So we wound up getting everything together. And about six months later, we wound up moving to uh, Los Angeles. And at that so the problem was that we moved, the job opportunity wasn't available. So I enrolled in school at UCLA at the film and television program and uh, started doing that program and doing internships. And one of the internships I did was uh, NBC's Unsolved Mysteries. And uh, during that process, my job was to basically filter through all the mail and find stories that would be uh, suitable for on-air for, for on uh, production. 
And during that process, I learned about it, learned a lot about, you know, the structure and how movies were put together and how they kind of put the, 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 the projects together and what was marketable, what wasn't. And that led me to a, a, one of the stories that uh, they, a lot, that I liked that the, that the company didn't want to do, but said I could have it to pursue for myself, turned out to be my first TV movie that was produced uh, by ABC entitled Payback, starring Ed Eisner and Mary Tyler Moore. And that project led me to, uh, was my first big break that basically opened the door. And then my second project was another a project called uh, Double Jeopardy that was sold to CBS, starring Joe Penny, Terry Garr, and Brittany Murphy. And uh, that those two projects opened the door to my first look deal at Warner Brothers Studios with Bud Grant, the ex-president of CBS. So I wound up doing a first look deal with him uh, for a couple of years. And then I you know, that gave me a chance to really learn the business side of things. And uh, during that period of time, uh, my ex-wife was managing a dance studio in LA uh, and she had an opportunity to take it over. So uh, she problem is we were pregnant with our first child. And so she needed help moving the studio and setting it up to a new location. And my deal had ended and everything worked out. And she asked me to come help her move the studio, which I did. And that led to me uh, being the CEO of the company Millennium Dance Complex for the next 30 years of my life. So it kind of took me away from the movie business. But, you know, I enjoyed the process of because uh, I started out also I danced in New York and all that stuff so uh, yeah it gave me a chance to get back into the dance business a little bit and uh, and that's basically the story in a nutshell but while I was at the uh, the CEO of the studio uh, our clients were you know all the top uh, Britney Spears and Jennifer Lopez and Justin Timberlake so we had all these big uh, pop stars there as well so it gave me an opportunity to still be in the business. And so my so I started working towards developing projects that were dance related and integrating what I've learned in the movie business, but now to the dance business and, and really blending the two through, you know, TV shows and that kind of thing. So the book really chronicles that journey. And I tell some fun stories about some of the celebrities you know, that I work with, like J-Lo and uh, Brittany and different people and uh, and it's just kind of it's just a fun story but it also like I said I deal with some of the the, the deals that happen uh, good and bad so uh, it's it's a educational book yeah. as well in terms of what to do and what not to do um, and basically now it's kind of come full circle I stepped down as the CEO of the dance studio Millennium in 2016 and took on a consulting role. And so now I'm moving back to what my first love was and what first brought me to Hollywood, which is producing movies. And so now I'm in the process of looking for new projects and developing new projects. And one of the things I, I want to do that I'm also looking to do that I've gotten some interest in is to take this book uh, and actually turn it into a feature film. So I've gotten, I got a call yesterday about uh, someone wanting to do that. So it's great. And uh, you know, it's a, I think it would be a great project. And so I think that will probably wind up being my next, next project. So um, <laughs> that that's, the awesome. re that's the Reader's Digest version. <laughs> you know, the movie business has expanded to Netflix and uh, Prime. And so there's opportunity knocking on your door. So that's great. So you're an actor, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. You've seen the highs, you've seen the lows, and uh, we would definitely want you back. So once I get through the book, we'll bring you back and uh, do another episode with you. Uh, but uh, Elton, well, thank you. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you guys for the opportunity. I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity you guys have given me to be on today. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Great, great. Thanks for being with us, Robert. At some point, maybe we can connect. Uh, Absol you know, Absolutely. We'll, we'll love it. We'll be in touch. So thank you for watching Bright Side Global Trade. And yes, we are now a podcast as well. So we are expanding our channels every day. And thank you for following, watching, subscribing, and being a part of our show. 
I know you're going to have loved this interview. So go get the books and take a photo so we know you're watching. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.